Hello everyone. Today we're going to do a slightly different video from what I usually do. This video comes as a result of one of my subscribers asking as to how a retrovirus functions and also uh, as to some examples of retroviri. The subscriber in particular was a person by the name of Praetorin Rex and I'll probably put the post up over here just to show you. Um, it can get quite dangerous, as I said to Praetorian Rex, to have me discuss viri and whatnot because it can just go on and on and on and on and on, the discussion that is, and me, obviously. So, uh, you know, I, I, I really hope that you enjoy the video and that you can learn something interesting. Now, Praetorian Rex was asking about the virus in particular regards to the werewolf and the zombie, and I think I used it in the vampire video as well. The reason that I used the retrovirus to explain as to how these creatures might come about is because a retrovirus has the ability to rewrite your DNA and completely change the nature of a cell, which is, I'm sure you can imagine, a very interesting thing for a virus to do, especially since, you know, this is kind of the topic of a lot of sci-fi. Now, before we begin, we need to ask ourselves, what is a virus? Well, a virus is a, it's not alive, it's not a creature, but it is a pathogen, it is a, 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 a strain of DNA or RNA that cannot reproduce on its own. Instead, it needs to infect a host cell and steal resources in order to reproduce itself. So your typical virus will, and one that I'm sure that you've seen textbooks and the like, your typical virus has a protein capsid, which is sort of a head looking thing, followed by a uh, neck part that sort of looks like a, a tube, and then some spindly little legs. This is a typical bacteriophage, and the reason I say you will have seen it in a textbook is because we've done a lot of research as to how these things function, particularly with uh, E. coli bacteria. Um, in fact, this is partially how I think we managed to get E. coli bacteria to uh, create insulin and that kind of stuff, using retroviri, that is, um, as well as bacteriophages to study how viri function, but that's beside the point. Now, what the head of the virus contains is the viral RNA or viral DNA, depending on the particular virus, and the spindly bit of the, at least the uh, bacteriophage, is used to inject the viral RNA or DNA into the cell. The little spindly fibers on your bacteriophage is used to grip onto the cell and it actually fuses with the surface of the cell. So this prevents the virus from being bumped off and whatnot. This virus, this uh, bacteriophage virus, is not what we usually see in humans. The particular shape of a virus is usually round and uh, has uh, uh, the equivalent of the spindly bits all across the surface. If you look at a virus or a photo of a virus under an electron microscope, you'll see that it has little spikes sticking out of it. These are the enveloping proteins that are used to attach the virus to the host cell. Now, before we continue, we also need to understand how your body produces proteins. What happens, very, very simply, and if you're interested, I can go into a lot more detail about this, but you know, for the sake of keeping this uh, short, I'll, I'll, I'll do this simply. What happens when your body produces proteins is that inside the nucleus of your cell, that is to say the uh, house of the DNA, where, where it is, uh, the DNA will uh, basically unzip and expose some of those rungs that you, you know, the adenosine and the thionine uh, and the guanine and the cytosin. This is then copied in a very binary process. Uh, when I say binary, I mean it looks like binary code um, it's copied into messenger RNA. The messenger RNA then travels outside of the nucleus, and next to the nucleus you have sort of a, a weird little wobbly uh, convoluted mess. And this convoluted mess is the endoplasmic reticulum, and it is on this side that the uh, mRNA will attach, and you will have proteins produced from the code of the mRNA. 
uh, quite literally the 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 mRNA is read uh, one uh, amino acid at a time and proteins are attached or well not one amino acid at a time it can be clusters it, it depends but um, so the the amino acids are attached to the mRNA and eventually when this process is complete the mRNA detaches from the protein and you have a new protein that flows about in your blood and uh, does what it needs to well I say in your blood it's in your cell and the mRNA disintegrates now what a retrovirus does is it reverses this entire process incidentally this process is called uh, transcription so quite literally to move a writing or to write uh, that's why I said sort of like a binary code so the retrovirus will reverse this entire process and in the case of HIV what it does is it will uh, HIV obviously is the example here since you're all probably very familiar with that um, HIV will attach to the cell and it will inject its viral RNA inside the cytoplasm of your cell the the RNA will synthesize viral DNA and through reverse transcription that is to say by reversing this this process of protein synthesis uh, not necessarily the protein making part but the steps leading up to that by reversing that whole process the viral DNA is then placed inside of your own DNA and it actually attaches to chromosomes what is very interesting is that the process of creating proteins and the process of copying DNA is actually checked by your own cells in a rather uncreatively named process of proofreading. But this proofreading does not happen for the reverse transcription. This means that while your DNA can have errors removed from it by actually checking the the uh, original copy and comparing that to the new copy the reverse transcript is process not at all so this causes a lot of mutations in the uh, retrovirus and specifically in HIV so this is why it's so very very difficult to treat and whatnot so once the uh, virus has inserted its DNA into your own DNA it will then start producing new viri in the same way that your body produces proteins and eventually the, the 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 virus will leave the cell and everything will continue as you know as previously described a very interesting process one more thing uh, that's actually particularly difficult about hiv is that as the capsid the ball capsid is leaving your cell it will actually be coated in the phospholipids that is to say the skin of your cell uh, it'll be coated in the skin of your cell and thus makes it very hard for your body to detect because uh, the various markers on the cell will be embedded into the HIV surface with only the uh, encapsul uh, enveloping protein sorry with only the enveloping protein sticking uh, sticking out and uh, basically for your immune system to identify the HIV virus uh, it becomes very difficult because one the HIV virus is covered in basically the skin of your cell it, rather horrifically actually and two the only receptor sites for the HIV virus are constantly changing because of the mutation that occurs during the reverse transcription process now the this this is also part of the reason that we end up with uh, a lot of trouble treating HIV and also treating the HTLV virus one and two, which uh, those two actually are very interesting in that they cause cancer, um, and it's it's it can be how how should I put it it can be quite uh, can be quite nasty in fact to to you know as a result of the mutations that occur so you know your the HIV that one person has is not the same strain as another person if person A infects person B 
initially their strains will be very similar and then eventually it will diverge. So you can be recursively infected by someone. This is why even people, couples who both of the partners have HIV, they're still encouraged to use protection and, uh, you know, uh, when, when engaging in uh, uh, sexual activity and uh, generally, you know, that kind of stuff. Because you can you can literally reinfect your partner after a while so yeah and this is called by the way recombinant uh, hiv and that makes up for a lot of the diversity that we find in the hiv virus and uh, yeah so one more thing though is that we can use the retrovirus as a plasmid a plasmid is basically in biology at least in genetic engineering it is a medium for inserting genes into a into into a, a living creature this is as i sort of mentioned is what we did with the uh, ebola virus no not ebola sorry e coli bacteria uh, we we basically inserted uh, human insulin producing genes into the e coli bacteria and this produces insulin that we then you know sell to diabetics and whatnot and use to treat diabetes. So it does have its use and it is something that we actually use quite a lot. Uh, just this process is actually relatively old compared to the techniques that we have today, which involves things like CRISPR and, uh, gosh, I forget the other thing, but yeah, basically I'm sure you get the point. Interestingly enough, I think in uh, Bioshock, the, the video game Bioshock, you're introduced to the word plasmid this is the thing that uh, allows you to, you know, get all the, the, the fancy powers, uh, somehow get the fancy powers. I, I can't imagine any kind of, you know, DNA that you insert into something as causing electricity, shoe, uh, electricity to shoot from your hands, but, well, there you go. Um, but, uh, oh yes, and this is also how we did things like inserting glow-in-the-dark uh, genes into pigs and whatnot so it's actually a very very interesting topic but anyway um, with that I, I do hope that you guys learned a few things about retroviri and about HIV in particular and also as to how the the HIV virus reproduces in that it might be able to help the uh, fantasy worlds that you're creating I mention that specifically because uh, a lot of my subscribers, a lot of commenters, in fact, say that the videos that I make inspire them to uh, make some fantasy stories and that kind of thing, which I really quite enjoy. So maybe this information will help you make uh, a very realistic and very, well, not realistic, but at least authentic sounding mechanism for a virus. If anybody has any additional questions or would like to see more detail as to how the HIV virus reproduces, which will obviously lead to uh, more understanding of how to use a, uh, well, not how to use, well, how to use a retrovirus in your own stories, as well as also, you know, just out of curiosity's sake, uh, do leave a comment down below and I'll uh, get on it as soon as possible. Otherwise, cheerio.